When starting a new job, have you ever given any thought to that initial period? According to research, the initial period on a new job is crucial for both the employee and the manager. A 2016 study found that 63% of CFOs allow a new employee less than three months to show their value. 9% of them gave an employee less than one month. On the other hand, what a 2018 study found is that 91% of employees consider quitting within the first month. Obviously, this could happen for a number of reasons, but the point is, how we start a job can have a great impact on our success on the job in the long term. First impressions only happen once, right? Yes, and we do want to do what is possible to make a great first impression. But at the same time, we should acknowledge that they don't necessarily have to last. Even if we start on the wrong foot, which could happen, we can change our new colleague's mind about us by challenging that first impression in different settings. So in today's video, I want to talk about things that we can do when we start a new job, which can increase our chances for success. Let's start with the first one, preparation. Before we even start our new job, we might want to research the company, their services that they provide, its competitors, go through reviews about the company culture. We could have a look at our colleagues' LinkedIn profiles. If we have questions which we cannot find the answer to online, it's a good idea to write them down so that we don't forget them. The more basic and introductory questions that we generally have when we start out a new job or with a new company, it's best if we ask them in the first day or during the first week. A small but significant part of this preparation is also testing our commute to work, if we're working from the office, obviously. Or if we're working from home, we should check like our internet connection and so on, the necessary tools that we need for working remotely. We should ask the relevant person about the schedule, at least the time we are supposed to be at work, the time of lunch break, how long it is, the time to leave and so on, we could also ask on the first day. Even if we have already been told this, it does not harm confirming a few days before our first day. It might just happen that everyone in the office, for example, shows up half an hour earlier for a morning coffee before starting work. Another thing we might want to give a, th a thought to is our outfit. The office dress code could be something that we noticed during the interview, in which case we should choose an outfit that will go along with that dress code. In any way, if it is something that you don't want to spend time thinking about, I would say a clean, neat and comfortable outfit should do the job. Worst case scenario, we can never go wrong with an outfit that makes us feel good and confident. There is some pressure that we usually feel when starting a new job when it comes to meeting many new people. And we want to make a good first impression. As we will have to introduce ourselves probably multiple times on our first day and during the entire first week, we could prepare a short script beforehand, a script that we could use to introduce ourselves. Having this removes a lot of that pressure. Two, on the first day and the first week. We should make sure we don't arrive late to work. And if we already asked about the schedule and we're told that everyone shows a little earlier for socializing, we may want to go slightly earlier to start the day with our new team. We should introduce ourselves. As part of the preparation, we might have already thought of a short script we could use and reuse to introduce ourselves. So in one way, having this ready to use script relieves some of the stress of having to talk about ourselves more than once, most probably, to people that we don't know. At the same time, it allows us to be more receptive of our new colleagues, to memorize their names and what they do exactly, and to be more self-aware. If one colleague is open to know more about us, we can go off script. And if another colleague does not have the time to listen to our scripted introduction, we can perceive that and keep our introduction short. On the other hand, we should try and get to know our colleagues as well. Being open and warm, not shying away from a handshake or a hug or the French bees, and asking questions that allow us for connection to be built with our team are helpful to both our work and interpersonal relationships. 
we should ask questions, possibly a lot of questions. This shows our eagerness to learn, and that not only helps us learn faster, but also makes a good impression. Some questions we could ask include the ones that we might have already prepared during our preparation step. A crucial question that we might want to ask is, what is expected of me? Sometimes we may think the response to this question is obvious or that it should be obvious, and so we are afraid to ask, but expectations are not always clear, maybe even to our direct supervisor. Clarifying exactly what it is that is expected of us allows us to, one, have a very clear set of objectives that we want to achieve, and two, to be able to evaluate ourselves, at least with some level of, of certainty, of course, as to whether we are doing a good job. It's almost always that on the first day or week on the job, people will invite us to socialize either over coffee, lunch, uh, or sometimes multiple occasions. We should be open to all invitations and we can even be the first one to extend an invitation to our manager, to the people that we will be working closest with, or to another newcomer like us. Last but not least, we should have stationary tools with us just in case there are no immediately available ones for us in the office. A notebook and a pen is a good idea to have. Three, what should we do during the first month? While we become more confident in our new position, we should keep in mind that it's still early to know what our colleagues who have been working with the company for a long time now know. We should stay humble and be open to keep learning. We should keep an eye out for things that we could add value on. It could be something extra about a task of ours, or it could also be tasks that aren't part of our job description, but that we either have experience or expertise on, or a relevant input on. We should have some of our focus on relationships. Relationships take time to develop. It might have been years that our teammates have spent together, and so it will take some time for us to build the same level of trust, or at least the trust that is needed to form solid relationships. We should ask for feedback. Once our direct supervisor gets acquainted with us and our abilities, they can easily tell what we're doing well and what we need to work more on or to get better at. The same thing goes for our closest colleagues. It should not be overdone, of course, but at the same time, we don't have to wait for our annual or semi-annual performance review to ask for some feedback. If the feedback given to us is good, we should not let that go to our head, and vice versa. If the feedback is not that positive, we should not let that dishearten us. If anything, it should help us understand our weak spots and work on improving them. Well, there we have it specific things that we can do to pave the way from the very first day, week and month to a successful job. I hope you guys find these helpful and I will see you next week.